Hello again, everybody, um, and welcome to this session, which focuses on policy work and opportunities outside London. Um, it's very easy to look at think tank world or policy research world and see it as very um, London centric, which can be off putting if that's not a place that you want to be. And of course, there are a lot of London oriented organisations in the sector, but there are also lots of organisations doing important and fascinating work outside of London. So this session is to give a bit of insight into that particular part of the sector. Um, you've met me already if you're in the first session. I'm Nicola, I work for the Institute for Government, and I should say that I'm here to chair this session and help sort through your questions rather than to provide kind of specific reflections on policy work outside London, as not that's not something we do particularly at IFG. But luckily, we have a stellar panel here who can speak to that. So we have Mary Towers, who's a policy officer at the Trade Union Congress, Ellie Radcliffe, who's a researcher at the Centre for Local Economic Strategies, and Andrea Barry, who's a senior analyst at the Joseph Roundtree Foundation. Um, in terms of format, li it's likely to be similar to the session that you just attended before this one. Um, we're going to hear from each of the panel who are going to speak for a few minutes about their organisation and their role and about the regional structures of their organisations. Um, and then once everybody's spoken, we'll use the rest of the session for Q&A. Um, and as before, you can use the Q&A box um, or you can raise your hand uh, if you prefer uh, to speak. So with that, let's uh, kick off with you, Mary. Well, thanks so much, Nicola. Um, and firstly, I'd like to say that um, it's fantastic um, to see that so many people are joining this session. Um, and I'm really excited to tell you all a bit about um, the TEC and my role there. Um, so I think to make the best use of my time speaking to you, I'm going to do three things. I'm going to quickly explain what the TEC is. Um, in case any of you are unsure. And then I'll tell you a bit about our structure um, and my role at the TEC. And then um, just a bit about our regional offices, because I know that some of you are particularly interested in opportunities outside London. So first of all, what's the TEC? Well, the TEC stands for Trades Union Congress. And we represent around 50 or so trade unions in the UK, bringing together more than five and a half million working people from a wide range of different sectors. So just to quickly explain to those of you that might not know, um, a trade union is a bit like a membership club of workers. So you pay a fee to join and in return, you get all sorts of work related benefits like advice and support, um, legal advice if you need it, help from union reps at work. So in the same way that trade unions are like membership clubs for workers, the TUC is a membership organisation for trade unions and we represent the needs and interests of trade unions and workers to government um, and, for example, to politicians, um, also to the media, to regulators, um, to employers and really anyone else who's interested. Um, so our structure at the TUC, we have a head office in London and six regional offices, as well as an office in Wales and Scotland. And I work at the um, head office in London, um, which is on Great Russell Street, just opposite the British Museum. At our head office, we've got a communications department that deal deals with media work and publications, an organisation services and skills department, and RISE, which is the department that I work in. Um, there are a few hundred um, employees in total at the head office. RISE stands for Rights International Social and Economic, and we've got several different teams in RISE working on different policy areas that are relevant to working people and unions, and I'm in the employment rights team. So my role, um, well, policy officers, I'm a policy officer in the employment rights team and policy officers deal with issues relating to all aspects of employment. Um, so, for example, equality issues at work, the use of technology at work, employment status and how this impacts on rights, platform and gig economy work, enforcement issues, collective rights and more. The role involves many different types of tasks. So, for example, we respond to government consultations, work with our unions to formulate new policy. Um, we conduct research, we write reports, um, organise events, um, do public presentations. Um, so it's an incredibly interesting and varied job. And crucially, it's extremely rewarding um, because we feel like we're actually achieving good things or at least trying to and working towards making the world of work a better place for everyone. Now, in terms of opportunities outside London, I know lots of you are interested in this. So I just want to say a few words about that and what the TUC could offer. Um, so 
one thing just to start out with is just to emphasize at the TUC we're currently reviewing our flexible working policy um, as a result of the coronavirus crisis and increased working from home and the TUC was already very progressive in terms of its approach to flexible working but following on from the current review there might be even more opportunities to have a role in London um, and then work some of the time at home and we do have many more job opportunities at Congress House in London than we do in the regions. But that said, in terms of our regional structure, we've got six English regional offices, each representing a regional council to which our affiliated trade unions nominate representatives. So we have um, offices in um, Birmingham, Newcastle, Liverpool, Bristol and Leeds. And then the London East and South East Regional Council is based at Congress House in London. Each office has got a regional secretary and some staff that work with them. So, for example, often a regional office will have an administrative assistant, a policy and campaign support officer and an education officer. And regional offices work with regional unions in delivering trade union um, TUC campaigns and objectives, as well as representing the views of trade unions to organisations and stakeholders across their local area. So, for example, working with local politicians, um, local authorities, uh, mayors and local enterprise partnerships. Um, we've also got um, an office in Cardiff, um, that's Wales TUC that has an office there, and also one in Glasgow, um, that's Scotland TUC that has an office there. Um, so that was a really whistle-stop tour of the TUC and our work, and I hope it's given you a bit of an insight um, into what we do, and I really hope that some of you might be interested um, in working for trade unions in the future. Thanks very much. Fab. Thanks, Mary. Okay, without further ado, on to you, Ellie. Hi everyone. Um, also, thanks Nicola for chairing this and thanks everyone for coming. It's great to see you all. Um, so I'm Ellie Radcliffe. I'm a researcher at the Centre for Local Economic Strategies. Um, the Centre for Local Economic Strategies, otherwise known as CLES, is the National Organisation for Local Economies. We call ourselves a think and do tank. Um, so we work at the intersection between policy theory and practice. We deliver a lot of consultancy work. We work very closely with local governments, regional governments, and also the devolved nations. So Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. We do deliver some grant funded projects and we also obviously do policy work. Um, so our ar areas of focus are predominant, predominantly around inclusive economy, thinking about community wealth building, which you may have heard about through the Preston model, de deepening democracy, shaping places, making public services excellent, and through all this tackling the climate emergency. So we're actually based in Manchester, um, which was a deliberate decision in the 80s when we were set up. And um, we have, however, recently taken on colleagues in Sheffield and London since the pandemic. Um, but like I said, the majority of our work is on a local, regional and kind of devolved nation basis. So our focus is not Westminster with, when it comes to policy. Um, so in terms of my role within policy work, all staff within CLES are actually allotted kind of time to work on policy, so it's normally a day a week, and we have the opportunity to develop the areas of policy we're most interested in. So because I have a background in citizen engagement and also in um, community organising, I have been able to develop our strand around deepening democracy and thinking about things like new municipalism and the feminisation of politics. But also within my role, because we're quite diverse as a team, even though we're small, there are only 16 of us. Um, we really have to do a lot of work to draw together the ideas that we get from our project work and our practice work to feed into our policy work. And that is really important within kind of the scope of how we think about our policy. Um, the fact that we have really strong connections on the ground in localities means that we're able to test our policy recommendations and ideas with people who are actually experiencing the realities of what national policy does to local practice. And also alongside this, I think it's really important to say that it's often quite easy to get fixated on the national level when we think about policy, but there are, is a huge amount that's possible in the local outside of the London bubble. And thinking about the local and the regional as a unit for change is really important to consider when we're thinking about policy, not just in terms of where we're working, but in terms of who we're working with as well. So I'm going to stop there <laughs> just to give Andrea enough time. Thanks so much. OK. And finally, over to you, Andrea. Um, yeah, so thank you for inviting us um, here at the Joseph Roundtree Foundation. We are based in York. We are an independent social change organization working to solve UK poverty. And so that takes in many shapes. So we have um, 
you know, through research, policy, collaboration, and policy solutions, we aim to inspire action and change that will create a prosperous UK without poverty. So to do this, we work with private, public, and voluntary sectors, as well as people with experiences of poverty to build um, our overall strategy of a prosperous UK without poverty. So how do we do that? So we, as I said, we have research policy, but we also have um, communications, um, advocacy and public engagement, and external affairs. So our media team, as well as our um, lived experiences participation team. We are based in York, as I said, because we have a um, reason we're based in York. Our, um, the Roundtree family, if, if people all probably know Roundtrees, we um, come from quite a um, interesting heritage. That means that um, we, like, we are based in York with the Housing Trust as well, Joseph Roundtree Housing Trust. And we, um, our largest office is in York at the old Roundtree family house. But we also have an office in London, which is a bit of a smaller office, but then also one in Glasgow for our Scotland team. So the offices in York do a lot of the policy, the research, the advocacy work in the comms work. And then the London office does external affairs work. But you don't have to, if you want to be based in York and do external affairs work, you can be based in York and do external affairs work. It's just how things have worked out. So, and when you walk through our office, you'll notice that a lot of people are actually Northern. So for me, clearly I'm Northern American, but the majority of the office are um, from the North in the UK. Um, and I just have a real passion of staying in the area and education and working in the area. Um, we do a lot of um, public engagement work within the North as well. So we've also um, been um, helpful in setting up some like poverty truth commissions in the North, including one in Manchester that I was able to go to the launch of, as well as um, in being involved in Challenge Poverty Week in Scotland. So um, we also work with in Northern Ireland. So we work with the um, with some of our partners in Northern Ireland to also put some focus on the um, situation there and also so how we can also advocate for that. I can really very briefly discuss what I do. As a senior analyst, I do work on making work a root out of poverty and I help write a lot of the um, reports that we do on UK poverty as a whole and I do the work section. So I do a lot on employment, um, protected characteristics in employment, labor market stats, all of that work. Um, and I'll stop there, thank you. Thanks, thank you so much. So we've already had um, quite a few questions coming in, but one question that a lot of people have asked um, is around kind of the impact of the pandemic. Several people are asking um, whether the panel thinks that the pandemic has prompted or, or will prompt more kind of think tanks and policy work um, to kind of head outside of London because it's not necessarily required anymore, whether they whether you guys think that there will be kind of whether your organizations are changing the way that you're working in response to kind of the pandemic and increased kind of flexible working. So I don't know if anybody has any thoughts on that that they'd like to jump in. Go Andrea. Um, I just thought I would um, say is it's not like a humble brag, but Joseph Brown Chief Foundation has always been outside of our main office has always been out of London. And we've also always been a flexible working organization because we understand just how important that is for people like single parents, for example, to be able to work because they need more flexible work as part of our overall research. And it's just a really good thing to do. So we, um, we've we been seeing a lot of them when we, we, have, we have an internship program that we did, we, we ran um, and did recruitment for at the beginning of the pandemic. And we had applications from all over the UK. And we essentially said, there was no obligation for you to be in the London office or the York office. You can be in Glasgow. You can essentially work in whichever office you would like um, based on when your inter internship is based, except for if you're working for the housing trust, you're gonna have to be working in the North because that's where we're based. So I think for um, Joseph Roundtree Foundation, I, it sounds funny to say this, but it hasn't actually changed much for us because we've always been like this, which in a way I yeah. think is- Yeah, definitely. Ellie, did you want to come in on that? Yeah, just to say, actually, again, like Andrea, Claire's have always been outside of London. We've always been Manchester based, so Northern and proud. But um, when it comes to thinking about kind of the impact of the pandemic, I think I mentioned that we have recruited since the start of the pandemic and we have actually ended up with colleagues who are much more dispersed than they would have been in the past. And I think the fact that we're all more au fait with 
you know, digital technologies and thinking about remote working, I think will create opportunities for people who are outside of London to be part of kind of think tank world, whether that is with organisations not based in London or even organisations based in London. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of my reflection on that based on our recruitment recently. Fab. Mary, do you have anything to add there? Um, really just to um, sort of echo colleagues in terms of the approach that the, the TUC, TUC takes to flexible working. So we um, we advocate flexible working um, for um, the workers that our unions um, represent. And so we had quite an, a well-established flexible working policy um, pre the coronavirus crisis. Um, so just using myself as an example, I've always worked part time for the um, for the TUC um, and have spent um, part of my week working from home and then part of the week working um, in London. So um, we're definitely very open to those kinds of arrangements. So even if there wasn't a role um, that was available at one of our regional offices, um, then there may well be something um, on offer at Congress House with that flexibility built into it. Great. Um, I actually just wanted to ask, I'm going to use chair's prerogative slightly by asking um, a question about whether when you're recruiting at your organisations, um, whether you, whether people who are applying for your roles, you're keen for them to have kind of some kind of experience in um, regionally focused work already. Um, whether you, that's likely to be something you'd be particularly keen on or whether somebody who's maybe done work in a kind of London focused or otherwise um, space previously is looking to move into regional work, um, whether those kind of people, you're, you're still kind of interested in applications for those people, from those people. I imagine a lot of people um, asking questions now are wondering a similar thing. Let's start. Go for it. Um, so because our work is national and we have analysts that work on regional work, we have, um, you know, within the policy team, we do work on what we call our place aspects. So when we're interested in certain regions or certain areas, it wouldn't be a negative. I think it would actually be a positive if you were able to show that you have done a lot of, a lot of focus work on one region because it could add some of the expertise that we may not already have at JRF. Mm -hmm. And it also, upon arriving here, you would get, you know, I can attest to this, you get quite a, an extensive training in anything else that you think that we, the organization, might think you need to know. So um, coming in with um, experience, maybe even on like, say, for example, Scotland, if you're if you are trying to work maybe for our Scotland team, it'd be a great opportunity for you to have focused knowledge on the region. But if you're coming into the overall organization, having focused um, experience on one area like London is not an hindrance. And in fact, a lot of our interns, when they applied to the program, they had a lot of research and policy um, experience on London, and it really wasn't a problem because you can use the same methods to apply to other regions. It's just understanding where you're looking at. Sure. Um, Mary, shall I go to you? Um, I think really, we. so it certainly wouldn't be the case that if one didn't come from the region in which one was applying for a role that one would then be ruled out um you know that that there are definitely all sorts of kind of transferable skills that would be important um to roles that we have at our regional offices um that don't require local knowledge um however that said um there's no doubt that um local knowledge would be would be an asset um, in some of those roles, um, particularly since um, I, I think I mentioned during my presentation that um, the offices in our regional offices will be liaising a lot with um, local politicians, um, you know, the, the local mayor, local business enterprise organisation. So I guess a pre knowledge about um, and having those sorts of networks. Um, would no doubt assist and be of benefit in the role, but you certainly wouldn't be ruled out of consideration just because you weren't from the local area. Mm -hmm. Sure. Ellie, have you got anything to add on that? Um, I think because CLES is a slightly different type of think tank, mm. we, we take a slightly different approach in that if you had London or regional kind of knowledge when it came to an experience when it came to policy, either would be applicable kind of in a CLES setting. I think the big thing that we're interested in is practical experience of turning policy into practice and that's the that's the kind of side of things that we find really fascinating and if people are really driven to turn it into reality um but that's that's kind of the approach that we take with our policy work as well so that's why mm. we do that. 
So, yeah, sure. Okay, I'm conscious that we are about out of time. So thanks so much everybody for coming and for all your questions and huge thanks to Andrea, Mary and Ellie. Um, the final two sessions of this event will start at 5.40, so in five minutes time. Um, 4A will cover a day in the life of a researcher and 4B will cover the role of membership organisations. Remember that all these sessions are recorded, so if you're struggling to choose, you can watch them back later. Um, and we'll also be circulating that FAQ document afterwards, which will hopefully pick up on some of the things we haven't had chance to answer here. So hopefully we'll see you in some of the final, one of the final panels, but otherwise, thanks so much for coming. <laughs>